Hello everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel Best IT Solution and today we will discuss microservice question and answer series which is mostly asking in interview. Okay, so these are the uh, questions for uh, microservice questions for freshers and experience both can uh, refer this interview question and answer series which is mostly asking in the uh, interview. Okay, so our first question is explain microservice architecture. Microservice architecture is an architectural development style which builds an application as a collection of small autonomous service developed for a business domain. Okay, so microservice architecture is an architectural development style which builds an application as a collection of small autonomous services developed for a business domain. So it is a collection of small small services which can be defined as a business domain which fulfills the requirement of a business domain. Let's take an example of e-commerce application developed with microservice architecture. So in this microservices architecture example, each microservice is focused on single business capability. Okay, so here each service is focused on a single business uh, capability. So, so, uh, suppose there is search, the rating and review and payment each have their instance and communicate with each other. So there is a search module, the search services, rating and review and payment for each each uh, modules. There is individual services there and they are uh, communicate with each other to provide the whole service. So our next question is what are the advantages of microservice? So uh, before we are using microservice, what uh, we are using? So here there are some significant advantages using microservice. So technology diversity, uh, that is microservices can mix easily with other frameworks, libraries and database. Okay, so microservice can easily uh, mix with other frameworks, libraries and databases. So these are, this is one technology diversity advantage. And another one is fault isolation, that is a process failure should not bring the whole system down okay so uh, fault isolation means is a single process failure should not bring the whole system down so before microservice uh, what we are using the monolithic applications in monolithic applications all these modules are uh, depend in one uh, project in one app services so if one service is in one module is down then we uh, completely system is down but in the microservice case fault isolation a process failure a single process failure should not bring down the whole system uh, down it is an advantage and greater support for smaller and parallel item uh, parallel team so it is also sub greater support for smaller and parallel team or and independent deployment so each service we can deploy uh, deploy independently you can deploy and deployment time reduce uh, this is also an advantage like deployment time reduce it uh, since this service is small small service and we can deploy it independently and it will also reduce the deployment time Okay, so next question is what is Spring Cloud? So Spring Cloud is an integration software that integrates with external systems. Okay, so Spring Cloud is an integration software. It is an integration software that integrates with external systems. It allows microservices framework to build applications which perform restricted amounts of data processing. So it allows microservices framework to build applications which perform restricted amount of data processing. So what are the main difference between microservices and monolithic architecture? So uh, microservices and monolithic difference uh, between these two is in microservice service startup is fast and in monolithic architecture service startup takes very, uh, very much time that is slower. Another one is microservices are loosely coupled architecture. So microservices are loosely coupled architecture but monolithic, uh, monolithic applications are tightly coupled architecture. So another one is changes done in a single data model does not affect other microservices. Any changes here in monolithic architecture, any changes in the data model affect the entire database. In microservices, microservices focuses on products, not uh, projects, but in monolithic put emphasize over the whole project. Okay, so the difference there is um, uh, a major difference we are um, uh, categorized here like in microservice the startup is fast, in monolithic architecture the startup is very slow. Microservices are loosely coupled uh, between the services but in monolithic architecture is mostly tightly coupled. 
changes done in a single data model does not affect other microservices microservices changes done in in a single data model does not affect the other microservices but in a microservice architecture any changes in the data model affect the entire entire applications microservice focuses on products not projects but monolithic put emphasis over the whole projects so these are the uh, main uh, differences so what are the challenges faced while using the microservices so microservices always rely on each other so therefore they need to communicate with each other so uh, microservices are rely uh, each other for therefore we need to uh, make a proper communication with between them so as it is distributed system it is a heavily involved model so since microservice uh, microservices are, are uh, distributed systems it is a heavily involved model if you are using microservice architecture you need to ready for operations overhead so uh, if you are using microservice architecture so you should ready for the operations overhead because uh, there is much more operations we need to do you need skilled professionals to support heterogeneously distributed microservices also so you need also skilled professionals to support heterogeneously distributed microservices so these are the challenges while we are uh, facing during the development of microservices what are the characteristics of microservices so characteristics or properties of microservices we can uh, say like uh, essential messaging framework and decentralized governance easy infrastructure automation design for failure infrastructure automation okay so these are the uh, characteristics like essential messaging framework different messaging framework also it will uh, provided decentralized governance easy infrastructure automation design for failure uh, and infrastructure automation so these are the uh, characteristics of microservices what is restful what is restful web services so restful means representation state transfer so restful web services is an architectural style that helps computer systems to communicate uh, over the internet so restful web services is an architectural style it is an architectural style that helps computer systems to communicate uh, over the internet so uh, these web services make microservices easier to understand and implement so these restful web services um, makes microservices easier to understand and implement explain three types of test for uh, microservices so in microservices there are three types of uh, test we have uh, seen like one is bottom level test another is middle level test another is top level test so in microservice architecture tests are divided into three broad categories so at the bottom level test we can perform a general test like performance and unit test but uh, first level or bottom level we can uh, test like performance test and the unit test this kind of test are entirely automated so this uh, this uh, performance test and uh, unit test are entirely automated at the middle level the next level test is middle level at the middle level we can perform exploratory tests like the stress test and the usability test so in the middle level we can test like the stress test and the usability test and at the top level at last we can conduct acceptance tests which are mostly fewer in number so in at last level or top level we can conduct acceptance tests which are mostly uh, fewer in numbers it also helps stakeholders to know about the different software features so this test also helps stakeholders to know about the different software features okay so next question is what is the meaning of oauth so oauth means open authorization protocol so oauth is an open authorization protocol so this protocol allows you to access the client applications on http for third party providers github or facebook or google etc so this protocol open authorization protocol this is a protocol which allows you to access the client applications without the credentials to uh, with the help of this oauth you can access the client applications on http for third party providers uh, we can uh, identify uh, us with the help of this third party providers like github facebook or google it helps you to share resources stored on one site 
with another site without the need of the credential credentials okay so this is the main thing so it helps you to share resources stored on one site with another site without the need of the credential so we need not to uh, memorize out the username and password we can uh, log in a particular uh, application with the help of this over or uh, with the help of this third party uh, authentication provider so why are container used in microservices so containers are easiest and effective method to manage the microservice based applications okay so containers are the easiest and effective method to manage the microservice based application it also helps you to develop and deploy individually the con another advantage of container is it helps you to develop and deploy the applications individually so mostly used container services are like docker so docker also allows you to encapsulate your microservice in a container image along with this dependency so docker also allows you to encapsulate your microservice in a container image along with this dependencies so microservice can use these elements without additional effort so microservice can use these elements and this image without additional efforts what is cdc so cdc is consumer driven contract so cdc is a, is a design pattern cdc is consumer driven contract it is a pattern for developing microservices so that external systems can use them so it is a pattern design pattern for developing microservices so that external system can use them uh, easily another question is what is the use of docker okay so docker is a container docker offers a container environment which can be used to host any application so docker offers a container environment which can be used to host any application we can create the image of a particular application with the help of this docker but we can deploy it individually so this software application and the dependencies that support it which are tightly packaged together so this software application the docker the software application and the dependencies that support it which are tightly packaged together what are reactive extensions in the microservices so what are reactive extension re in microservices so reactive extension is also called as rx reactive extension so it is a design pattern reactive extension is also a design pattern which allows collecting results by calling multiple services and then compile a combined response okay so in this uh, rx reactive extension design pattern allows collecting results by calling multiple services so by calling the multiple services it will collect the results then uh, after combining the results it will create a combined response after compile this results it will combine a uh, combined response it will create a combined response so reactive extension is a popular tool in distributed systems which work exactly opposite to legacy flows okay so this react uh, rx is a popular tool in distributed systems which works exactly opposite to the legacy flows so what are the uh, commonly used tools uh, which is used in microservices so one is the wire mock another is docker another is strix so these are the important microservice tools so docker is also you very used for uh, containerized strix is also used for the uh, monitoring the application and wire mock is also used to, uh, for communicating each other uh, for the microservices so these are the uh, microservice architecture e-commerce application uh, for example so this is the client and this is the search uh, service this is the payment service and this is the uh, review and rating service okay so each microservice communicating with the ui service ui microservice also communicating uh, between them also okay this is a uh, simple architecture diagram of microservice application so tell me the name of some famous companies which are using the microservice architecture okay so there are many more companies nowadays uh, moving towards the microservice uh, architecture okay because these are very uh, easily uh, for deploying and managing so most large scale websites like uh, twitter uh, netflix amazon so these are uh, they are using the microservice architecture they are all moving from monolithic architecture to microservice architecture okay what is end to end microservice testing 
so end to end testing validates every process in the workflow is functioning correctly so end to end e to e so end to end testing uh, validates every process in this workflow in that workflow every process is working or functioning correctly or not it also ensures that the system works together as a whole and satisfies all requirements so it also ensures that the system works together as a whole and satisfying all the uh, client requirements this is the end to end testing what is the meaning of uh, semantic monitoring in microsoft architecture so semantic monitoring combines automated test with monitoring of the applications so semantic monitoring combines automated tests with monitoring of the applications it allows you to find out reasons why your business is not getting more profits it also the semantic monitoring also allows you or uh, find the reasons why your business is not getting more profits why it is uh, so these are the uh, semantic monitoring what are the challenges you face while working microservice architecture so there are many more challenges we are facing during the uh, work in microservice architecture so like developing a number of smaller microservices sounds easy so developing a number of microservices sounds easy but the challenges often faced while developing them are as follows so first like automate the components so difficult to automate because there are a number of smaller components so for each component we have to follow the stages of build deploy and monitor okay so for uh, de developing the components is easy but for uh, managing the components for deploying the components monitoring the components uh, there is a challenge so difficult to automate because there are number of smaller components so for each component we have to follow the stages of build deploy and the monitor so this is the difficult task another one is like perceptibility so maintaining a large number of components together becomes difficult to deploy maintain monitor and identify identify the problem okay so this is the perceptibility means so maintaining a large number of components together uh, become difficult to deploy maintain monitor and also identify problem so it requires great perceptibility around all the components it requires a great perceptibility around all the components configuration management maintaining the configurations for the components across the various environments becomes tough sometimes okay so the maintaining the configurations for the components maintaining the configurations for the components across the various environment becomes tough sometimes okay so uh, configuration management this is the main uh, things like managing the configuration so maintaining the configurations for the components um, for a large number of components across the various environments becomes sometimes uh, very tough another is debugging so difficult to find out each and every service for an error so this is also very important like difficult to find out each and every service of an error so it is essential to maintain centralized logging and dashboards to debug the problems so guys it is essential to uh, maintain the centralized logging and dashboards to, de to debug the uh, errors or problems another question is what is the difference between monolithic applications soa application and microservice architecture okay so monolithic architecture is similar to a big container where in all the software components of an application are assembled together and tightly packaged okay this is the monolithic application this is suppose you are a big container and in this container all the software components of an application are assembled together and tightly packaged packaged this is the monolithic architecture but in service oriented architecture soa in soa service oriented architecture what happens it is a collection of services which communicate with each other so this is a collection of services some services or there are suppose there are three or four services so this is a service oriented architecture so the communication can involve either simple data processing or it could involve two or more services coordinating some activity okay in service oriented architecture what happens it is a collection of services which communicate with each other so the communication can involve either simple data processing it can involve either simple data processing or it could involve two or more services coordinating in coordinating some activity okay so two or more services coordinating some activity so 
So this is the SOE and in microservice architecture what happens? In microservice architecture it is, a, it is an architectural style that structures and applications as a collection of small autonomous services model around a business domain. Okay. So the microservice architecture what happens? It is an architectural style that, that structures and applications as a collection of small autonomous services. So it is a uh, collection of small autonomous services modeled around a business domain. So this is the difference between these three. So this is a diagrammatical representation of this uh, monolithic application SOA and microservices. In monolithic application it is single unit and SOA means uh, coarse grain when there are two, three or four services and microservices there are number of services a fine grain. What are the characteristics of microservices? Okay, so there are uh, different characteristics we can categorize like uh, decentralized governance and products, not projects. Okay, um, emphasize on the products, not the whole project, essential messaging frameworks, and also decentralized governance like teams are responsible for all aspects of the software they build microservice and data management, decentralized data management, infrastructure automation, design for a filler, okay, so these are the uh, diagrammatical representation of the characteristics of the microservice. Name three commonly used tools for microservices. The three commonly used tools for microservices are like Docker. So Docker is a tool that lets developers set up apps in lightweight, portable containers in an automated way. Okay, so this is a, a developer uh, tools that helps developers to set up apps in lightweight portable containers in an automated way. It helps put the microservices and their dependencies into containers. So this makes sure that the microservices are the same in all environments and makes it easier to launch and grow them. So this makes sure that the microservices are the same in all the environments and makes it easier to launch and uh, grow them. Another one is like Kubernetes. This is also an important uh, component of microservice like Kubernetes. Kubernetes is a powerful tool for managing, scaling and automating the launch of the Docker containers. Okay, so Kubernetes is a powerful tool for managing, scaling and automating the launch of Docker container. So it does this by orchestrating how containers work together. So it has important tools for running microservices in a live setting such as load balancing, service discovery and self-healing uh, and automating scaling. So these are the properties of Kubernetes uh, which helps uh, the uh, launch the Docker containers. So what are the um, uh, characteristics of Kubernetes like? This, uh, it, is a, it is a characteristics of like load balancing, service discovery and the self-healing and the automating the scaling. Okay, so these are the properties which help the uh, microservices and the other is the Spring Boot. Okay, so Spring Boot is a, is a Java framework or platform built on Java tool that makes it easier to build and launch microservices. So Spring Boot it is a famous platform um, built on Java. It is a famous platform built on Java that makes easier to build and launch microservices. Okay. So it is a features like built-in web serv server, auto configuration, Okay, and, me and measures that are ready for production, which makes it easier for developers to build, test and launch the microservice. Okay, so in Spring Boot there are some features like, um, it is a built-in web server, like the inbuilt uh, Tomcat also there and auto configuration. So the most important is this is the, uh, in Spring Boot auto configuration features are there. Okay, so these are the uh, features which, which gives a Productions ready applications to the users, which make it easier for developers to build, test, and launch the microservices. Okay, so these are the three components which are mainly used for microservices like the Docker and the Kubernetes and the Spring Boot. So, Spring Boot used for the creation of the project or microservices efficiently uh, by giving the auto configuration features. Kubernetes helps the uh, manage the Docker containers, uh, providing the features like the auto scaling service discovery, self-healing, okay, and the docker helps the microservice to create a container for the microservices in automated way. 
so another one is like what is uh, ubiquitous language so if you have to define the ubiquitous uh, language then it is a common language used by the developers and users of a specific domain through which the domain can be uh, explained easily so the ubiquitous language has to be crystal clear so that it brings all the team members on the same same page same page and also translates in such a way that a machine can understand okay so this is the ubiquitous language what is restful rest and restful and what are the what uses in microservices so the rest means representative state transport restful web services are an architecture style to help computer systems communicate over the internet so this makes microservices easier to understand and implement so microservices can be implemented with or without restful api but it is always easier to build loosely coupled microservices using restful api so microservices can be implemented with or without restful api also so without using restful api also we can uh, create the microservices but it is uh, it is always uh, easier to build loosely coupled microservices using the restful api what is actuator in spring boot so spring boot actuator provides restful web services to access the current state of the running and application in the production environment so it is used for the monitoring of the applications in the production so with the help of this actuator you can check various metrics and monitor your application what problems are solved by spring cloud so while developing distributed microservices with spring boot we face few issues which are solved by the spring cloud like the complexity associated with distributed systems so this includes network issues latency overhead bandwidth issues and security issues so these are the issues complexity which are we, we face during the uh, distributed system so these are uh, latency overhead network issues bandwidth issues security issues all these are uh, solved by the spring cloud ability to handle service discovery service discovery allows processes and services in a cluster to find each other and communicate okay so service discovery uh, this is a uh, this service discovery allows the processes and services in a cluster to find each other and communicate okay so to find the process each other and the communicate each other so it is helps the service discovery so when uh, you can say the main work of service discovery is it uh, discover the uh, services and also um, how they communicate with the service that will manage with the service discovery solved redundancy issues so redundancy issues often occurs in distributed systems so these redundancy issues are solved by the spring cloud load balancing improves the distribution of workload across multiple computing resources such as a computer cluster network links central processing units so okay, so these are the uh, improve the distribution of workflows across the multiple com computing resources such as the computer cluster network links central processing unit Redu reduces the performance issues so reduces performance issues due to various operational overheads so reduces performance issues due to various operational overheads so these are the uh, these things are managed by the spring cloud so can you give a gist about rest and microservices so rest rest though you can implement microservices in multiple ways rest over http is a way to implement microservices so rest is also used in other applications such as web app api design and mbc applications to serve business data okay so uh, the, you can also develop the microservices with the without the help of also rest uh, but this is a uh, easier way uh, which helps you to implement the microservices rest is also used to other applications also like web apps uh, api design and mbc applications all these are used the rest microservices means microservices is an architectural where in all the components of the systems are put into individual component which can be built deployed and scaled individually so there are certain principles and best practices of microservices that help in building a 
resilient application okay so microservices this is an architectural pattern where in all the components of the systems are put into the individual component okay so which can be built deploy and scale individually so each services are uh, built deployed and scaled individually there are certain principles and best practices the microservices that helps to building a, a resilient applications in a not cell you can say that rest is a medium to build microservices so you can say that rest is a medium and the best medium to build the microservice what are different type of tests for microservices so there are uh, three types of tests like bottom level middle level and top level so while working with microservices testing becomes quite complex as there are multiple microservices working together so tests are divided into different levels like the bottom level at the bottom level we have technologies facing test like the unit test performance test these are the completely automated at the middle level we have the test for exploratory testing like the stress test and the usability test at the top level uh, we can we have the acceptance tests that are the few in number these acceptance tests help stakeholders in understanding and verifying the uh, software features what do you understand by the distributed transactions so distributed transaction is any situation where a single event results in the mutation of two or more separate resources okay so it results the mutation of two or more separate resources of data which cannot be committed autom automatically so in the world of microservices it becomes even more complex as each service is a unit of work and most of the time multiple services have to work together to make a business successful okay so to make a business successful in uh, in our business world there are multiple services uh, combined to have a work together to make a business successful okay so this is the distributed transaction because one project is distributed with the more uh, services and we are uh, collecting the results and we are uh, create a combined uh, response for that uh, to, re to maintain the uh, fulfill the requirements of the client what is bounded context so bounded context is a central pattern in domain driven design so ddd so in domain driven design bounded context is a central pattern so it is the focus of ddd's uh, domain driven design strategic design section which is all about dealing with large models and teams so it is the focus of ddd's strategic design section which is all about dealing with the large models and teams so ddd deals with large models by dividing them into the different bounded context and being explicit about the interrelations so ddd deals with large model by dividing them into different bounded context and being explicit about their interrelations what are client certificates so type of digital certificate that is used by the client systems to make authenticated request to a remote server is known as the client certificate so it is a digital certificate that is used to by the client system to make authenticated request to a remote server as is known as the client server so this is the certificate which is authenticated a client to uh, access a remote server client certificate plays a very important role in many mutual authentication design providing strong assurance of a requester's identity what is the use of uh, pact in microservice architecture so pact is an open source tool to allow testing interactions between the services providers and consumers in isolation against the contract mode so that the re reliability of microservice integration increases okay so with the help of pact we can increase the reliability of the microservice integration okay so pact is an open source tool to allow testing interactions between the service providers and the consumers in isolation against the contract made so that the reliability of microservices integration increases so users in microservices like used to implement consumer driven contract in microservices test the consumer driven contract between consumer and the provider of a microservice so test the consumer driven contract between the consumer and the uh, provider of a microservice 
what is the role of wave restful api in microservices so in a microservice architecture is based on a concept where in all its services should be able to interact with each other to build a business functionality to, to fulfill a business functionality okay so to achieve this each microservice must have an interface so this makes the web api a very important enabler of microservices so being based on the open network principles of the web based full api provide the most logical model for building interfaces between the various components of microservice architecture so in microservice architecture uh, it is achieved the each microservice must have an interface so each microservice should be must have an interface so this makes the web api a very important enabler of microservice so so being a based on the open networking principles of the web restful apis provide the most logical model so restful web web or restful api provide the most logical model for building an interface between the various components of a microservice architecture another question is like how can we eradicate non deterministicism in tests so non deterministic test ndt so ndt are basically unreliable tests so so sometimes it may happen that they pass and obviously sometimes they may also fail so this non deterministic test sometimes it happen that it may be pass or obviously sometimes it may be also fail so as and when they fail they are made to rerun to pass so so ways to remove non determinism for the test are as follows so what we can uh, follow to remove this non determinism test from our applications like quarantine asynchronous remote services isolation time and resource uh, resource leaks okay so these are the uh, some properties we can follow to avoid this non determinism like quarantine asynchronous remote services isolation time and resource leaks what is the difference between mock or stop so what is stop and what is mock stop stop it is a dummy object that helps in running the test so stop is mean it is a dummy what is difference between stop and mock stop is a dummy object that helps in running the test provides fixed behavior under certain conditions which can be hard coded any other behavior of this stop is never tested for example for an empty stack you can create a stop that just returns true for empty method so this does not care whether there is an element in the stack or not so this is a uh, empty object which is used for the uh, test only provide fixed behavior under certain conditions which can be hard coded or static data any other behavior of the stop is never tested and mock means a dummy object it is also a dummy object which certain properties are set initially in dummy object which have, which have certain properties which set are set initially so the behavior of this object depends on the set properties the object behavior can also be tested for example for a customer object you can mock it by setting name and age you can set age as 12 and the test for is is adult method that will return true for age greater than 18 so your mock customer object works for the specified condition okay so you can mock that uh, object what do you mean by continuous integration ci so there is ci cd continuous integration continuous development so ci what do you mean by ci continuous integration is the process of automating the build and testing of code every time a team member commits changes to version control okay so ci means continuous integration means it is the process of automating the build and testing of code every time automating build and testing of code every time a team member commits changes to the version control that is in git and github or bitbucket any where when a commit has made changes is made a commit is made at that time that process is automatically build and testing of the code every time okay so this encourages developers to share code and unit tests by merging the changes 
into a shared version control repository after every small test completion okay so this encourage developers after every small test completion it will share code and unit test by merging the changes into a shared version control repository another one is what is canary releasing so canary releasing is a technique so canary releasing is a technique to reduce the risk of introducing a new software version in the production so it is a uh, technique to uh, reduce the risk of introducing a new software version in production so this is done by slowly rolling out the change to a small subset of users before giving it out to the entire infrastructure that is making it available to everybody okay so canary releasing is a technique to reduce the risk of introducing a new software version of in production so instead of uh, release the software uh, to the uh, whole infrastructure uh, we are just releasing it a uh, between some uh, small infrastructures like uh, slowly rolling out this done slowly rolling out the changes small subset of users so be, between a small subset of users uh, we are uh, releasing the software before giving out to the entire infrastructure that is making it available to everybody and the last question is what is continuous monitoring so continuous monitoring gets into the depth of monitoring coverage so it is uh, gets into the depth of monitoring coverage from in browser front end performance metrics so from the in browser to the front end metrics performance metrics through application performance and down the host virtualized infrastructure metrics so continuous monitoring gets into a depth of monitoring coverage so it gets into, into a depth of monitoring coverage from in browser front end performance metrics through application performance and down to test uh, to host virtualized infrastructure metrics okay so this is the uh, continuous monitoring we can continuously monitoring our applications in browser okay okay so the end uh, thank you guys and if you have got some idea or knowledge from this video tutorial so please like and share the video with your friends and please subscribe the channel by which i can motivate and i can make more and more video on this topic okay so thank you